Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. Right now I'm joined by Paul Marshall, who's with Ski Utah. It is his birthday today. Happy birthday, man. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. You, you, get, you going out for uh, for your birthday after this? Uh, I'm going to go ski, yeah. Yeah. That's a, the best birthday the gift. The best birthday gift ever, right? Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. So what's up with uh, Ski Utah right now? What's what's on the agenda? Uh, you know, we're just we're trucking along. I mean, it's been, you know, one of those seasons that obviously we can say isn't the best on the on the books but you know from guest experiences from what we've heard on the mountain people are still having fun people are still coming uh it the mountains have done an amazing job opening up terrain and getting the the mountain as much open kind of in that early season and we've had a couple good storms and you know it's still early february and march is our wettest month generally so you know winter could still be here so don't don't head south yet or don't D whip out the golf clubs yet. Don't count us out yet because exactly. like you said, yeah, March typically is when we receive those back-to-back -back really heavy storms when we get the really good powder conditions. And kind of like we were talking during the break, our our bad years are some of the, the, the country's best years or best condition years. So so we, we need to be optimistic about it. There's still, still great riding out there to be had. Well, exactly. I mean, prime example of that is a couple years ago, I think it was... Uh, 14, 15 or whatever. It was a low snow year as well. But then when the totals came in on the year across the country, Alta actually got the most snow. We, out were, of leading the, we were leading the pack yeah. still. Yeah. And we, were, we thought it was a low snow year, but we had the most out of any resort in the entire country. So, you know, while this is an off year to say right now, it, you know, it could turn around. It's, uh, you know, Utah still has that consistency and the skiing is, is still good. And, and coming up is probably one of the favorite part of the years for most skiers and snowboarders in the state is spring skiing snowboarding where you get to enjoy the best snow in your t-shirt or shorts yeah. what's up with what's on the agenda what events are coming up now in the spring well I mean the every mountain across the state has done like an amazing job of kind of highlighting the spring skiing and like you said we get those storms but then we get those bluebird sunny days and uh, you know one of our most famous uh, group of uh, events is the spring groove at Park City uh, 16 days uh, starting March 25th, running through the end of the, the season, but you know the the climax of the whole thing is the pond skim. The pond and, skim, yeah. yes, everyone's favorite event for sure. Exactly, I've been judging it for a few years. Yeah, yeah are you fun. gonna be a judge again this year? Uh, you know, I don't have the official word, but I, I've thrown my, my my hat in the all right. Well, my name in the hat. We're open for it for <laughs> yeah. sure. Awesome. And so, kind of getting ready for this the spring. Um, what? What recommendations do you have for people who are looking to get out and do some really good turns? Get get out and have some fun. I would just say, I mean, Utah is kind of known for just the access to the outdoors. So, um, you know, while we are not getting those deep powder days like we had last year, the skiing is still good. The, the groomers are fun. The mountain air is great. The sun, the bluebird days with the sun is healthy for the skin and, and everything like that. So, I mean, wear sunscreen, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's fun to be outside, so don't like hang up the skis yet. I agree. It's I think you th I think you speak on a great a great point, which is the fact that we're super lucky that we have um, this great outdoor access 30 minutes away from a, a major metropolitan area. I mean, you could be at work and, and at lunch go ex explore a couple runs and, and have a good time and just get out of the city grind and kind of get up into the mountains and enjoy exactly. what Utah's known for, the outdoors. Exactly, and I mean, I, you know, the winter tourism industry here is doing well. I mean, based off of kind of early season numbers you know, like revenues higher. I mean, bookings are probably going to come a little lower than normal. Our skier visits probably aren't going to hit a record year again, but it's the winter tourism industry is helps with all our state and local taxes. So like give those guys a, give the mountains a, a round of applause. Absolutely. Because, They've done a great job. They've done a fantastic job. On average, our, our tourism industry saves and the average person about $1,200 in local taxes a year. I was going to ask how much of, how much of the Utah's economy is comprised of our tour ski tourism industry. Well, tourism, tourism, in, in, tourism general. in general makes up, uh, it's actually our biggest export now. It's an wow. $8.4 billion industry. Wow. Uh, this winter sports or the winter tourism industry makes up about $1.4 billion. So a good chunk of that change goes to, goes to the winter time. Um, and of that total tax, uh, you know, revenue stream that comes into the state of Utah, it helps fund schools, roads. Um, and saves us on, on taxes, which is pretty sweet. You it's know? pretty awesome, yeah. So, you know, 
thank somebody that you see who's coming in from California. <laughs> yeah, and also, like you said, kind of thank everyone that's on the mountain staff, all of the, everyone who's been blowing snow and all the people who have been making sure that, uh, that the mountain's gonna be just as fun as it ever could have been. And, and it really truly is right now. You can still go get some, some really fun turns and amazing days out there. Yeah, hug a snowmaker. They've, done <laughs> an, they've had a, a very, uh, very busy year and they've done an amazing job opening up these mountains. Excellent. So what's um, what's in the next coming weeks, months for Ski Utah? What's your guys' big big goals for the next few months? Obviously, it's just ending the, the season on a on a high note. On a high note, um, we have, you know, what was it? Uh, February second, Groundhog Day. We have yep. six more weeks of winter. You know, uh, you know, seasons run pretty much till the first or second week of April. So we still have you plenty know, of plenty of time to, to get some skiing in. Um, weather patterns can change. Uh, but the skiing, regardless, is still good, and you know we're we're rolling out uh, big marketing campaigns for spring skiing and trying to you know like I said to end on a high note, bring in a lot of skiers that and snowboarders that were contemplating whether or not they were going to do this or beach vacation and trying to capitalize on on that and you know help help our uh, help our state out. Awesome. Well, where can uh, people keep up with everything Ski Utah? Uh, if you just go onto SkiUtah.com, we have everything, but. You know, we're, we're doing an amazing job on all social channels, so if you're looking for that, that quick read, you can just follow us at, at any one of our platforms at Ski Utah. At Ski Utah. Perfect. Paul, thank you so much for coming on and sharing everything with us. Enjoy your, enjoy your day today and yeah, have you. some good turns. Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. We'll be right back with much more on the Mountain Morning Show right after this, so don't go anywhere.